Greetings, this is Atma Boda. Today is February 27th, 2022. This is episode 64, entitled Life is Not a Monastery. Beginning now. The most perfect philosophy allows you to see through the eyes of everyone and yet still retain your individuality undisturbed. It is big enough for everyone to be the best of who they are. It advocates for a supreme experience because it wants nothing less for everyone. Just as nature is not one color, but many beautiful colors in near infinite shades and combinations, so also does it intend to celebrate the uniqueness of the individual and its many nuances of expression. This is true diversity, not a conformity to androgynousness or groupthink. Instead of dividing by sex or race or sexual orientation, both femininity and masculinity are celebrated in their extremes, recognizing that without them, diversity is impossible, and anything less than this is to perpetuate a limited, non-diverse perspective. Some would argue that there is no such thing as best, but without the best, the full flavor of the universe cannot be experienced. Without the best, your life becomes a delusion of meaninglessness. Thus devoid of purpose, you drift aimlessly and powerlessly, unaware of your own significance. You are special. You are significant. It is for these reasons that you can experience the best and thereby your life becomes better than you imagined. To be limitless is to have no limits placed upon your potential, and your potential itself is also limitless. Since the goalpost continually gets extended and expanded, you never reach the fullness of who you are, and that is a good thing. There is no limit to who you are and what you can be, and this is a reason for everyone to celebrate each moment. From a subjective perspective, God is great. God's perspective doesn't disagree. Where people get confused is thinking that greatness is a limitation when it is not. I think maybe some people want God to be ordinary so that way they can feel better about themselves also being ordinary. The truth is that God, of course, is in everything, the good and the bad. Describing it is about adding, not subtracting. Isn't it great to be in the good and the bad, the best and the worst. To be the best means nothing is outside of you, and yet you are still great. That's because the whole is more than the sum of its parts. That concludes the first portion of <laughs> the first written portion, and so now let's just go into that, shall we? So first of all, life is not a monastery. What does that mean? That means that life is not a set drab color of ochre robes like you see monks wear in a monastery. When you look around in nature, you see so many wonderful colors. And that's a symbol that that is what life is about. Life is expressing itself in an infinite ways. So we shouldn't limit ourselves and our expression, and especially not in the name of God. Of course, you can understand that symbolically monks wear these robes to emphasize that nothing in the world can compare to God, and they don't want anything to distract from the magnificence of the Creator. But on the other hand, Naturalists like John Muir recognize that being in nature and surrounded by the majesty of nature 
is itself a celebration of God. And that is a way that we can become closer to having this relationship with the higher power. But it, we shouldn't even allow ourselves to stop there because we can dress in colorful clothes. We can have a beautiful home. There's no need to let these things separate you from this concept of a greater experience, a higher spiritual experience of truth and of unconditional love. In fact, it should heighten it because in so doing, you are honoring everything in nature and you can see and experience and hold everything to be a symbol of something much greater. I was having a conversation earlier where I remarked how sunrises and sunsets are something that dualists cannot appreciate because without darkness, we would have no sunrise and no sunset. If everything was all light, all we would see is light. We wouldn't be able to make out anything. We wouldn't be able to appreciate that there is such thing as a sun. We wouldn't be able to appreciate that there is such a thing as color because what is color itself but a refraction of light and that would not be able to happen without darkness. The difference is, is that even in recognizing duality, by identifying with the light, you become more powerful than the darkness and you are able to utilize darkness as a way of enhancing life's experience and celebrating the love and the truth that exists everywhere because the truth does pervade all and you can be a master of your environment by identifying yourself with what is strong and not what is weak T to take the power upon yourself is not a bad thing some people may argue that in order to be humble you should recognize your powerless nature and your insignificance but if you look deeply into that concept how is that celebrating the wondrousness that is the highest truth how can you be a force for good in this world if you regard yourself as powerless doesn't it make logical sense that a higher intelligence would want power to go to those that would wield the power for good and not bad so that it's not corrupted so that it's not used to oppress others but instead to uplift and inspire everyone call me an idealist but that is what truth wants and that is what the universe conspires to accomplish it wants the best for everyone and in order to experience the best it's important to align yourself with the best if you can't even acknowledge that the best exists then how can the best exist within you and before you go on about oh how identifying with the best is some kind of an ego trip and about how god or a higher power is neither good nor bad that's just in my opinion ridiculous because in the end what is better than god nothing is if there's an intelligent force that pervades the universe you better be absolutely confident that it is good because it's got so much power that if it wanted to be a force for evil or a completely uncaring force it definitely has that capability 
but that's not the intention. The intention is to help and inspire everyone. And it doesn't need a specific religion. It doesn't need a specific book in order for you to have that experience. In fact, religions and different collectivist ideologies have given the concept of God a bad name. But if you were to rephrase that and further define what God actually means and consider it just as simply a higher intelligence or something that is great and magnificent and yet non-judgmental, but is there to help you by affirming this reality of God within yourself, you are opening up a doorway to receive this. And by doing this, you can allow God to come into your life and help you. And you're not giving up anything to receive this. In fact, there is no sacrifice necessary in order to receive this great power into your life. Now, this power may not come in a form that you expect. You may have strict limitations on what you think God should do to help you in your life. Maybe you think that you need a husband and you need a wife. And if you get a husband or wife, it has to look this way. It has to have this much money. But in fact, if God exists, which it does, it also has infinite wisdom. And that means it knows better for you than you yourself know. And this may start to sound like some kind of a sermon and it didn't intend to come out this way. But the point here is that by trusting in a higher power, you're also trusting that there is a higher power that knows better, for, knows better what is good for you than what you yourself knows is good for you. And that I, requires somewhat of a leap of faith to know that there's something outside of what you can understand outside of your immediate control and yet exists to help you in ways better than you accept or expect and there's no penalty for refusing this grace you don't need to have God come into your life and work miracles for you. I'm sure there's ways you can survive and find some semblance of happiness. And that is the wonderful diversity that we have as individuals. You have the power to say no. You have the power to accept a lesser outcome or a greater outcome. You have the power to misinterpret things and think that if you choose the path of a higher power, that that's going to bring you to a lower place or a more insignificant place. You can choose to have that perspective or you can also choose to have the perspective that by acknowledging the existence of a higher power, that in turn makes you a greater person than you imagined possible. And that is the paradox. However grand is the majesty of the ultimate, the closer you get to the ultimate, the more empowered and expanded you become. And that manifests itself in a variety of ways. We're not only talking about spiritual experiences. We're also talking about material wealth. Do you think a higher power wants to only give material wealth to the greedy and those that are consumed by their desires or their hatred or their malevolence or their tyrannical persuasions? Of course not. The universe exists in an abundance 
to also bestow upon you in its abundance the wealth that exists so that you can have the resources that you need to be able to create a heaven on earth. And maybe in your capacity, that heaven on earth just means a better life for yourself and your family. Or maybe it's more on a local scale of helping the needy. Or maybe you're going to be blessed to have a greater vision of how you can use these resources to help humanity as a whole. But all of these are possibilities that exist and you can choose to be a vehicle of this happening. You can choose to be a part of history in the making because God does not think small. God thinks big and thinks much bigger than any of our smaller minds can here on earth. And that is what's so exciting because when you align yourself with this higher power, you become a force of nature. You become a living part of history. You are given the opportunity to do things on this planet that can be written about and movies made about and songs sung about for generations to come. You can be the hero in your own story. And the greatest heroes are the ones that recognize that their power comes not from mortal flesh and bones, but by greater potentialities and powers that be that exist beyond just this mere material realm. Because at the end of the day, no matter how beautiful nature is, no matter how many colors exist in nature or how beautiful that sunrise or sunset is, the ultimate is far greater than any of these things. And that's what is meant by the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And when we <laughs> choose this path of the ultimate, it's the grandest adventure of all because God puts the capital G in grand. There is no more fun way to explore and, and create something amazing in this adventure called life. What our concept is of the ultimate is so much greater than what any religion allows itself to be that you can't even put religion in the same category as this higher power. It's literally the inspiration behind every masterpiece, whether it be a great work of art or a symphony created by Bach or Beethoven or Mozart, whether it be a magnificent sculpture by Michelangelo or a painting by Leonardo da Vinci or plays in literature by greats such as Shakespeare and the great philosophers of the past, whether it be Socrates and Plato, all of these major figures in history were inspired by God, by the ultimate. And this is the future that can await you. And all you need to have is the courage to accept, to be able to stand up, stand tall, and allow your expectations to be exceeded, to allow yourself to be a vehicle for greatness because greatness is what the ultimate wants for you. And the more you deny this, the more you can stay small. But if you have the courage to stand up to the plate and say, yes, I am ready. I am ready to make do on destiny, to make it happen. 
then the whole universe stands behind you to make it so.